Resonance theory is used to represent the different ways that the same molecule can distribute its electrons. So what that means is that it turns out that even though the connectivity or how atoms are connected isn't going to change, the electrons between them can move sometimes. And that's what resonance theory is all about. So I'm going to teach you guys some rules, and you guys are going to get the hang of it as I go along. All right? So the first thing to know is that atoms will never, ever move. The reason is because, remember that I said, the connectivity of those atoms, how they're connected to each other, doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the kinds of electrons that are in between them that are keeping them linked together. Okay? The only thing that moves is the electrons. Okay? And when I talk about electrons, what I'm talking about is pi bonds. Pi bonds move. And I'm also talking about lone pairs. Okay? So what that means is that literally I'm not moving any atoms. All I'm moving is double bonds around or triple bonds around. And I'm also moving where lone pairs are at. Okay? And that has to do with the electrons that are moving throughout the molecule. Okay? Now, something about resonance structures is we're going to find out that there's something called contributing structures. Contributing structures are structures that both contribute to the actual representation of the molecule because they average together. And what we're going to find out is that none of these contributing structures are actually going to look like the actual molecule. So what that means is the molecule is a blend of all the different possible resonance structures that a molecule can have. Okay? So let's go ahead and learn some rules. First of all, um, we're going to use curved arrows to represent electron movement. Just so you know, these rules are going to apply to the rest of organic chem. We're going to keep using these rules anytime that we're moving electrons, which is pretty much all the time. So what a curved arrow would look like is like this. Okay. So notice that I'm using a full arrow, and I'm curving it around. What that means is that two electrons, that represents two electrons, are moving from one place to another. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is, after we've built our resonance structures, we're going to use double-sided arrows and brackets to link related structures together. So that means that once I figure out my resonance structures, I link them together using those double-sided arrows like I have here, and then brackets like I have here. Okay? Then finally, well not finally, but arrows are always going to travel from regions of high density, high electron density, to low electron density. And like I said, this is a rule that applies for the rest of organic chem. Anytime we're moving electrons, we always start from the area of the highest density and move to the area of lowest density. So what that means is that, for example, a positive charge would be an area of low density. So you would, because that means that you have electrons missing, right? So what that means is you would never start an arrow from a positive charge. In fact, you would always go towards the positive because that's the area of low density, okay? And then finally, the net charge of all the structures that we make must be the same. Okay? And the reason for that is that, remember that resonance structures are different ways to represent the same molecule. And what that means is that all of them should have the same net charge because we're just distributing the electrons different. But we're not adding any electrons or subtracting any electrons. So what that means is they should really all be this, have the same charge. 